So you got a guitar kit for Christmas or your birthday, whatever, and you want to figure out how to stain it. I'm going to call this my intro to staining a guitar body. This is a Polwani body from China. It came with a kit. It is a four piece body. This wood is actually pretty nice. It's kind of like Corinna Limba, um, just not as sturdy. It's plantation grown, so when they're growing it, they cut it real quick. You'll see a lot of guitar bodies uh, from China made out of this stuff. This one is in decent condition, but you can see the different coloration between one piece and the other piece. So what we're gonna do today is show you how to stain this because spraying is a whole nother set of issues for you guys. And if you put a stain on this and put an oil like a true oil, you can get a pretty nice finished guitar body with not all that much fuss. This body has a lot of streaks in it. And when you're trying to pick a color, you really want to focus on sort of two color combinations. You can go with like brown base and then sort of a yellow, orange, red in those types of hues. Those colors work really well together. Or if you want to go for like more of a solid color, you would do like a black base with a blue or a red or a black with a green. You really don't want to mix sort of like the browns and the blues or the browns and the reds. They don't always look so well. So you really want to take sort of the browns, yellow, red, some of those earthy colors, keep them together as you're wanting to apply them. So a lot of times in my videos, you'll see me put a dark base down, sand some of it back, and then add additional colors. That's where you'd put a brown base down, sand it back, and then do like a yellow or an orange or even a red on the side to feather it. If I wanted to go for a red, blue, purple, green, I would start with a black base. So it's a little bit of a trial and error as you've done this. I've probably got 75 videos of different staining techniques. With this coloration and this body, I'm going to go with a black. A black's going to hide some of these a little bit better. If I had a color scheme that was a little bit more equal in terms of the grain, I may go with a brown or red or yellow, but with this dark coloring on one side versus the other, I'm gonna go with a black, and then I'm gonna add a color. Don't know which color I'm gonna do yet, but this is an interesting body. The back actually looks better than the front, and I guess if you were gonna put a pick card over it, it doesn't really matter, but we'll finish this up and show you how to do it. I'm using Angelus dyes today. You can purchase these in these little three ounce bottles through the link below. I get a little bit of a credit for that, and I really enjoy using these stains more so than any other stains I've used. For a couple bucks, these bottles last a number of bodies, so if you screw up on a sand and start over, you can do that. So just buy some of these smaller bottles, you'll be much better off. I buy the big bottles, I go through a lot of this stuff. Also, I've got an old cut up t-shirt here. These are really easy to find in your hamper or whatever, if they've been washed a bunch, then they're not as fuzzy as you're rubbing this uh, stain in. So we're gonna go with a black. And you wanna be careful as you're pouring over the body, especially if you got like a really heavy figured piece I have dripped on before. I am not going to uh, add filler to this. So this is an open poured wood. I don't like adding filler to my guitar bodies. And this one, I'm not going to do that as well. A lot of guys that, if you're going to be spray painting and you want a mirror smooth finish, then I would definitely pour fill. But for this example today, we are not going to do that. Additionally, if you get these bodies, you may want to sand them down a little bit more. But since I've got a stain and sand anyway, I just left it. And you can see already I've got even coloring within the grain, which is perfect. I'm gonna add two coats of black to this. Two coats really helps sort of get all the wood even. So that looks pretty good. We'll stain the sides. The one problem with Pawani is that it tears out a lot. So it's soft and as you're routing, sometimes it bites. This body actually probably could have used uh, another round over on the side. It's got a real tiny round over, like a, a 16th. My favorite is usually like an eighth. 
you can see the tear out there. And this stuff is really absorbing the dye. You'll still have a ton left over. I can just tell it's sucking it up. And actually this black with the grain actually looks really good. So you gotta put those two coats on because you can see inside the pores, the dye is not soaking in. But this big open grain reminds me a little bit of ash, northern ash in the sense of how big the pores are. I'm thinking this would work well with a blue Red's probably the only color that you can use black and brown with, but it gets a little bit muddy with the black. Looks a lot better with the brown. So we'll put this second coat on. We'll let this dry for oh, a couple hours. Usually about four or five hours. Sometimes I leave it overnight, it just depends. So there's the two coats. You can see I hid the dark splotch there. Got one sanding mark I'll clean up as I'm going over this with the sander. One there. But body's in decent shape. Let this dry. All right, so we let this dry about six hours and it's looking pretty good. Couple spots where the dye didn't go all the way in, but that's all right. We've got just some basic 320 grit sandpaper. I've got my Makita sander. If you wanna do this by hand, you can. I prefer doing it with the sander. I'm just used to doing it that way. We'll place the grit on it so I can vacuum it. Like so, I'm not gonna take off that much. My pressure is gonna be very light. And essentially what I'm gonna do is do this in this teardrop, teardrop shape on the front and the back and we'll do the same color on the front and the back. So I had a couple scratches that I sanded out. First thing we're gonna do is come back with some black and just go over the spots that had to be sanded out. So we saved the old rag. And we'll just feather it in like this. And right here as well. So this actually looked pretty cool if you just sanded it and left it, which is what a lot of guys do. Just even out the black. So we're gonna come back with some blue. It's the color I decided to go with. And we're not gonna thin it or anything. We're just gonna do like a dark blue burst. I 
You can see as you apply, you'll pick up a lot of the black. Sometimes too much blue turns like a purple-ish. But I'll show you a trick to fix that. And it's pretty pretty wet to go on you can see where it turns a little bit purple we'll fix that after we let it dry So that's black and blue. Come back to the other side. Turn the rag. in that teardrop pattern I hid that darker pot or that lighter no it was darker I hid that darker splotch and then even on the front you can see I got the colors to blend pretty well it is definitely more purple what we'll do is we'll let this dry and we'll come back hit it with some steel wool and we should get it real close all right so we let that dry over 24 hours it's a tad streaky and blotchy and that's okay we're gonna fix that like i said the blue can turn a little bit purple so i didn't want to put too much blue down and since i've already got blue in what i can do is take a little bit of neutral and wash it but first things first is the steel wool trick always fixes a lot of issues. So this is O, 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 O grade steel wool, fine steel wool. We're gonna come in and begin to just pull off some of the color. What that's gonna do is make the blue more blue, less purple. You can see it pulls out a lot of dye. We're gonna rub this all over the body Decent pressure. What this does is it takes that top layer of color out. You can see where it was a little splotchy right there. We evened it out. And come down here. Pull a little bit of this out. And really this depends how much you do is what you think it's looking like. So this is more of a personal taste. You can see this is big open grain and as I'm taking the color out, it's pulling a decent amount out. Take a little bit from up here. The trick is to try and get it even and make sure it looks good. And that is a back and forth process. So here there's a knot, which I'm not gonna be able to get much color out. It'll be slightly uneven. Same with right there. But you can notice I 
took some of that splotchiness from the beginning off already. It's much more even. And this all depends on the look that you're going for. So if you want a midnight blue, you probably just try and get the color even and leave it. If you want a lighter blue, you're gonna take more of this out. Great thing is the coloring is now looking pretty equal. So we fixed that. And going with the darker color helped mask that. So what I want to do is go for a little bit more blue, but I'm not going to use the blue. I'm going to use the neutral to just sort of move the colors around a little bit. I normally don't like thinning the dyes. I feel like I've never really gotten great results, but with this one and what I'm going for, I may actually do that. People say not to use steel wool. I've been using steel wool for, I guess, 10 years. I vacuumed it up. And I've had great results. So here I pulled out most of the color. I'm going to try and keep it even. Got a little bit more on this side. It looks really cool. I'm going to vacuum this up. Same process to the back side here. Instead, we're going to vacuum. So I actually really like the way the back looks. That is pretty slick. But we're gonna do, I don't know, maybe we should leave the front. The back is definitely bluer than the front and I like that look. Feels like I should just add a little bit of neutral and blue right here and I can fix that. So we're gonna put our gloves on. The way we're going to fix this is we're going to take the blue rag in neutral and put the neutral on the blue rag and then rub it in. That way we're not going to have to make a custom mix. I'm just going to sort of refresh the blue here. Brings the blue back. Not as much white. Still have a lot of black on this. But if we fold this, we could find the spots that have more blue. This is probably the trickiest part for you guys, is getting this to be even. But this is way more blue. I've covered up all of the white spots. 
The trick here is just to go over and make sure you have cleaned up. We've got one streak right here that's more purple. That's because of the darker wood grain. We'll hit that with steel wool once more. That should do it for us. At least I got a little bit more even coloring and it's a lot less splotchy. This is just sort of fading the black back in. See sort of the poor man's burst. Poor man because it's, you're doing this with by hand versus all the expensive spray equipment. I'm liking the way that looks. That looks awesome. I think all we have to do is just take a little bit of steel wool and we'll be able to get that same look. The splotchiness is gone. Real close. So we'll let this dry and come back and clean it up. All right, so we let this dry and actually it looks pretty good. It's a tad purple here, but we're just gonna do the steel wool again just keep it in this corner slightly if we can try and see if we can pull off some of that purple leave it a more blue it's, it's a little bit hard to do that that streak is going to cause some problems so what we're going to do is just sort of lighten it up slightly with this So for this example, I'm not gonna try and get the colors to match. I just wanted to show you sort of two different looks. This one has more blue. This one has been sanded out significantly more. Next step here is to take this outside and use sanding sealer. And what the sanding sealer is gonna do, it's gonna lock in that color. So when we come back to apply oil, it doesn't pick up those colors back and make a big washy mess. So. We're going to go upstairs with some Mohawk sanding sealer. We're going to put four coats on very light. The first two coats are mist coats. And then the next two coats after that are a little bit, little bit heavier. And then by that fourth, fifth coat, let it dry for 24 hours and you can put whatever finish you want. All right, so for the finish on this body, we're gonna go with this stuff called velvet oil. My brother makes furniture and swears by it. It's way more yellow than what I want, but that's all right. Just testing this out. You guys don't always have to use uh, true oil, so we're just gonna play with this one. I like true oil. That's what I use on a lot of my bodies. It's easy to use, but we'll try this as it comes highly recommended. So the trick when you're applying the oil after you've got the sanding sealer down is to just put one coat down and leave it. It'll pick up the color a little bit. Actually, it's not too bad. And let the oil penetrate, seep in, and seal it. And then come back with another coat. So that's one coat, 
picked up the oil a little bit. If I didn't put any sanding sealer down, this would already be a mess. And then we'll go to the back side. See the back was a little bit lighter. I'm gonna show you guys the difference. Surprisingly, the color evened out just a little bit. Maybe it's still a little bit lighter on the back. Soaked in pretty good. We'll do the sides next. Didn't hit the sanding sealer all that great on the sides, so I may have a little bit more color coming up. This again is an old t-shirt. Yeah, the sides didn't get as much sealer, so it's picking up a lot more color. So what happens if you don't use the seal, you pick up all your color and have a mess. And we have to move to the garage because this stuff's going to stink. And happy wife, happy life for you guys. That's pretty dark. We're just gonna go around the front and the back and clean up any drips from the sides. This is way glossier than I was imagining. We'll try it. A lot of drips on the side. Clean that up. So you see how much that sealer works when I used the non-sealed sides to picked up all that dye, which is why you need to use the sanding sealer. Alright, make sure we've got all the sides cleaned up. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, the back is definitely lighter than the front. So you can see how much difference you can get just by using that steel wool 